If you've ever shied away from building a chair thinking it's beyond your skill set, think again. In our new April 2013 print issue of Woodworker's Journal, Editor-in-Chief Rob Johnstone shares a straightforward ladder-back chair design built from ordinary lumber and dowels. No fancy hand tool work or bent laminations required. It's the second installment in our Small Shop Journal series for this year. Rob also shares a shop-made jig to help you cut the chair's round tenons on your router table. It's pretty clever, and you'll find it as a more on the web video for April. Clever is also a good way to sum up reader Paul Austin's approach for making comb hinges for his projects. A little band sawing, stacked gluing, and drilling is about all it takes to add custom wooden hinges to doors and box lids. You'll find out just how easy it is in this article. Benchtop mortisers are certainly popular in hobbyists' shops, but wouldn't it be great if they came with side supports, some drawer storage, and a task light? Well, we can't promise a new model that's coming out with these souped-up features, but we do have a nice project that should help fill in the gaps. It's a mortiser stand that you can easily retrofit to suit whatever machine you own. Here's a way to add creature comforts and convenience to your mortising tasks. Or, how about a mahogany desk for your home office? Simon Watts, one of our frequent contributors, designs a three-drawer version here, and we provide the measured drawings and the material list to build it. But what really sets this desk apart are its ebony inlays. They're not hard to add for a distinctive piece of custom furniture. On the lighter side, there's Bill Hilton's whimsical puzzle box project. With a few scraps and a router table, you can create one of these little brain teasers in an afternoon. It makes an attractive and engaging gift for anyone, and once they solve it, they'll probably also wonder how you made it. For our tool content, Shondor Natsalansi rounds up nine of today's 18 to 19.6 volt heavy-duty drill drivers. He's put them to work on some tough drilling and driving tests. If your old cordless drill has seen better days or just doesn't have the gusto it used to, be sure to read Shondor's review and find out which tool gets our best bet award before you trade up. If you like to buy air-dried lumber now and then or cut your own from backyard trees, it's important to evaluate moisture content. And to do that, you need a moisture meter. There are lots of these options on the market, but first you need a basic understanding of how they work and what to know. We'll give you a quick crash course in our today's shop department this time. In our wood turning department, Ernie Conover covers the basics of pyrography or wood burning. It could bring new detailing possibilities and personality to your vessels and bowls. He'll show you a variety of techniques and tools for wood burning in his new More on the Web video for April. Michael Dresner will help you fill out your finishing toolbox arsenal with supplies for adding color, dry brushing, and rubbing out your finishes. He'll tell you what supplies he wouldn't be without in his Finishing Thoughts column. But of course, don't miss a bunch of new content in our tricks department, stumpers, Q&A, and shop talk. And be sure to flip over to what's in store for the latest in tool and supply offerings. It's all coming your way in the new April 2013 print issue. If you don't subscribe yet or would like to purchase this issue alone, sign up and buy online by visiting woodworkersjournal.com.